Hi guys, it's Amanda Watson from MrsWatsonEducation.com, my personal blog where I share tips and resources with other educators, but as we all know, it's a really hard profession. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I use my Google Calendar as my lesson planner and my class calendar that I share out with students and their families. So to get started, what you're going to have to do is go ahead and go to your Google Calendar. Um, you can use your personal Google um, Google login you can make a whole separate google account just for your educational stuff so i have one that i use just for like signing up for subscriptions like to nearpod and stuff like that and as my calendar but it's really up to you um what i do then is i go and start creating multiple calendars so i don't just use one single calendar i make lots of different calendars and the way you do that is on the side you just click here create a new calendar and i think about the different things I might want to have like highlighted in my lesson planning, right? So I have tests already created. Um, school events pop up that I want to know. You could add a description if you want. I'm just going to go ahead and create a calendar. Okay, let's make another one. What else do we do? Well, I'm a science teacher, so I do labs a lot, right? So I'm going to put that in there. Created. Ooh, what about just my regular class? right? My class instructional materials, right? That's going to be a separate calendar. Um, another one I like to use is due dates. So that's going to be assignments, due dates, right? Those are things I use frequently when I'm doing, think about what you have like marked in different colors on your physical lesson planner, create that digitally in this format. So now I have those different calendars. You can see down here, all these different ones, and I can start customizing my calendar to make it work for me. So I'm going to make labs this nice bright green right here, just because it reminds me of science, right? I'm going to make school events my school's colors are blue so it's going to be that cobalt blue i'm not going to use these tasks so i can just get rid of that um i'm going to due dates Ooh, tests are that red color due dates i don't want due dates to be i want them to be visual but i don't want them to be like alarming so let's put those yellow right that's like that middle ground my class course let's see that's that really cool color there but i want it to be purple because that's a fun color for my class course so now i've customized my calendars it's multiple calendars so what next well this is where it's great we're now moving forward to august 2020 i still don't know what's going to happen so this is just for fun so let's say that we are our first day of school is going to be on the 17th. So I just clicked on the 17th and I'm going to put that there. There. So now I can add a description if I want, but this is where you have to be careful. You have to go down and select the calendar you want it. I don't want it in my regular, that could be my, my personal account, but I want it as a school event and I'm going to hit save. Perfect, okay, so now I have that on my calendar. I'm going to go here, and the next day it's gonna be all about me activity, right? It's gonna be activity. I'm gonna make that into my classwork. That's what my kids are gonna do, so I can visually see that's what we're doing that day. Now here, I already put that there. It's gonna be their lab safety test. I'm gonna put that for Thursday, so that means on Wednesday, I need to go over science lab. Oh safety right so that's going to be my activity make that my class done now the cool thing is if i have a lesson that goes with it in my description i could type it up i could put the standards i could link it to the actual materials if i want so it's very it's really an interactive way to do your lesson planning where you have all the information there so i can save it again right um let's see due date um contact is something we do in the beginning of the year, the contact sheet. That's going to be due this day. It's going to be a due date, yellow. Save it there. I could remember add a description and actually put in the actual contact sheet that the students have to bring to me so they have it there. Perfect, okay, I have week one figured out. I'm a middle school teacher, so I have the same prep. I'm very lucky. Um, if I had multiple preps, I'd probably make two different calendars um, and two different, like I'd make a, a Mrs. Watson seventh grade um, Google sign-in and I make a Mrs. Watson sixth grade sign-in so just I could keep them separate um, but that's just how I would do that 
um, you might find other ways you can. You might be able to keep track. Now, the great thing about month view is you could see it for, as a glance. Um, if something changes, let's say on the 18th, I hear about from an administrator that, hey, guess what? We have a school assembly and all sixth graders have to attend. It's going to be from these classes. So now I know, okay, about me, it's only going to work for half of my classes that day. Let me go and edit that in just so I could visually see. It's going to be from the 18th to the 19th. I'm going to now save that in there. And now that activity is spanning two days. So I could kind of visually see that. And I can add assembly to, and I could add periods one and two or whatever I want there so I could visually see that. Now, if science lab safety, this takes over two days now, I can move that here instead and move that there and that's still a due date activity. So as things constantly change with me, I don't use the paper planners because I don't, I can't read my handwriting and I don't like erasing things because there's a constant movement of due dates when, you know, school shut down or we get a hurricane or whatever. And this is just a way I could keep track visually of things um, and it helps me plan. So I love that. Now, the next thing I want to share with you is how I make this into my class calendar that I share with my students. So if you finish this up and you could you know, plan as far out as you want, I'm going to have a second tutorial about how I do that, especially for the new teachers that I might be starting and how I do my lesson planning. Um, you veteran teachers, you are probably pros and know exactly how it works for you. So I'm going to leave that for another video. But to share this now, um, you're going to go into your settings. And you are going to uh, click on the calendar. So I want to share, and it's weird because you click on one, but it'll, it'll show you how it works. I'm going to share this calendar. I'm going to scroll down, not a shareable link, okay? But I'm going to scroll down where it says, uh, sorry customize, okay? So this is where it has all the integrated calendars. Uh, I can customize this. And this is where it's kind of cool because now I can go through and select all the calendars I want. I could change the color. Um, so I want for this calendar to be here. I want it to be my classes, my due dates, my lab, my school events. But I don't care about the holidays. Maybe I do, maybe I don't, whatever. I could click whichever ones I want to be displayed in this HTML code that it's going to generate for me. I could change the background. I could decide if I want the time zone listed or not, if I want them to see the navigation buttons or not. I could click all those things, right? And now, I'm going to have my, let me go to August, my calendar here. I'm going to get the embed code. And when you get the embed code, it's live code. So anytime you make changes to your Google calendar, right? Um, when you go in and add new events and this hurricane comes, you shift things around, it's going to still live change to wherever you link this embed code. Now in the past, I've linked this embed code to a Weebly account. I've linked it to a Canvas page. Um, so all of your LMS systems probably have an embed function there. You can embed your calendar directly there. Now in the age of Bitmoji virtual classrooms, I was very frustrated that Google so far has not allowed us to be able to embed um, things into a Google slide. I kind of understand why, but I wish they would be able to make that um, option maybe in the future that will be. So I had to figure out another creative way because I didn't want to make another another Weebly website that was a, on a different server or a different program. And I didn't want to use my Canvas one. I could have, but I didn't want to. So I wanted to have something clean that was all just kind of within Google. So um, this is my calendar in my Google Sites page, which is pretty cool. Um, and I just want to show you something. So this was what I've shared. And it's very cool because I can go back months, months, months. I could go back to when I was teaching whole other years. February 2019, right? We're going back. Let's go February 2018th and see what is live. And I don't mind because I only share the actual class calendar, not my personal, you know, appointments and details there. So uh, it's kind of nice because I could physically go back and see, oh, what did I do last August? Oh yeah, I forgot. That took two days and just kind of see it very quickly. Plus you have the notes in the description if you want to use that. So that's really cool. Um, I'm going to show you just really quickly because I use that for Google sites. Um, Accidentally, I'll go up here. So I got that embed code, but I don't need it for Google Sites because they make it pretty easy. So I'm going to go to my Google Drive just really quickly to show you how I made that work because it's really nice. And then now in my Google Classroom, I was just able to link that URL into my calendar on my Google, um, sorry, my, my 
Bitmoji virtual classroom. I was able to link it there. If you don't know what that is, look into my other blogs. I have a six part series that talks all about that. So if I go into um, make a site, I can make a Google site. And it's gonna take a second, but it's really fast. And this is, I just did a one page site just for this, just to link it to my Bitmoji virtual classroom. You could put your title, whatever. Um, they have an embed code part. And for some reason that wasn't working as easily for me because I don't know why. But what I did find is I could go here, it's in my site and I can just click the events and the things that I don't want, the contacts, the holidays, the whole thing, I just want those parts in the calendar to be inserted into my page. And now I have my page here. Now I don't, um, you can edit it to show different things. You could have it to, let's go to the month view because that's what I like. And now I have my calendar shareable on a Google site that I could just get to save it, publish it, get the URL link to my, I'm link it to my Bitmoji classroom, to anything else I need. And it's going to have all of the, um, oh, it's not live, but it's going to have all the time, the dates and everything loaded there. So very cool stuff. I love doing this just saves me so much time and we all know there's always surprises in teaching when they're like oh it's a surprise fire drill okay let me make adjustments um, I especially like that you can link um, and make notes and do your standards um, some people have a question and I wrote this in my blog but like how do I get away with this um, don't you have to submit lesson plans well I've had pretty flexible principles in the past where I could submit I could just print the monthly view so I print, you know, the however months I've been teaching, I print those out so they could see that. I also take a picture of my agenda board every single day. I take it with cam scanner so it kind of scans it and puts it into a file I have um, that I also print out because that has more detailed parts of my agenda. Um, and then I also submit my um, county's curriculum app that shows the, the pacing guide as well linked with the standards. So I'd submit those three things. I've never had an issue. However, I have had like teacher programs and a principal specifically my first one that wanted the very specific specific lesson plan format and I adjusted and type, wrote those out as they needed. So this isn't for every school, but for most schools where the principals just want to show, see that you're working and planning, this is a great tool that I find saves me so much time. Being able to visually see everything, make move things around very quickly is a lifesaver in a lot of cases. So I appreciate your um, willingness to, let's see, work so well with me and look at that and hopefully it's a, something, a tool that you could use and will help you a lot like it's helped me. So thank you so much for watching and stay tuned to other things to come. Bye.